Okay, and we're live. So, uh, <laughs> yes, I'm here with my wife, Cheryl. He's so lucky. We're we're actually testing the uh, sound system to see if the microphones work. Um, but Cheryl has some thoughts on what has happened to our culture, to our society, in the aftermath of the discovery of the uh, SARS-CoV-2 Wuhan flu virus. And just, I mean, generally, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think the world's gone mad. I think the shutdown is a joke. It's uh, hurting our economy. Um, families are hurting. It's doing a lot of damage uh, to everyone. And I think it's been overrated. I think a lot of it was political. I think at this point it's time to open the country up, let people get back to work. People don't want to leave their homes. That should be their decision. It should not be the government's decision made for them. Um, we're supposed to be a free country here, and let's start acting like it. Well said. Um, so is it your position then that the draconian measures taken by uh, governors and their regulatory hitmen are worse than the, uh, the virus itself? I do. And you've been personally affected by the virus. You've known people who have been sick, yes. people who have died. So you don't take it lightly. We're not um, virus deniers. Um, we just think that the, uh, um, the lockdowns, the, the closure of businesses, the kids not having social interactions, schools being shut down, these kinds of things. The have, government have is causing more, more harm on the people than they are good. And what do you say to somebody that says that we're approaching half a million dead from this from this virus? I don't agree. I think the numbers are manipulated. I do not feel they are correct or real. Uh, all of a sudden, no one's dying of the flu. Uh, people die in a car accident, and it's blamed on COVID-19. Um, there was a, uh, a paper that the CDC came out with some time ago that indicated that by their own measure, only about 6% of the reported deaths were actually from COVID. Now, the fact checkers uh, in the big technocrat media, uh, social media have come out strongly to say that that was misworded, that what they meant was that, uh, you know, it was, it was people that had comorbidities um, and the the COVID-19 was the final thing that actually, uh, you know, wind up killing these people. Even so, that's still a very small percentage of the people who are reported to have died from COVID-19 who have actually died from COVID-19. Um, and we don't want to make light of that because, um, I mean, as you know, and maybe, maybe some of these people out here know, my mom actually died of COVID-19 and she, she did. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's no question in my mind about it. So um, it's a terrible horror, but I think that the horror and the tragedy of the virus was inevitable. And I think that the horror, the human tragedy, and the horrors of the uh, executive actions taken by so-called leaders, uh, that's a word I hate, I don't like uh, calling our elected representatives leaders, but I think that that horror was avoidable. And we're starting to see um, a lot of compelling evidence, statistical fact coming out of places like Florida and Texas versus places like New York and California. Um, two extreme examples of draconian measures versus far less draconian or, um, or, or more lenient measures. And there's statistically no difference and in fact, if you want to find any slight differences, it tends to err on the side of uh, there is less infection, less disease, less death in the places with fewer restrictions. Um, so that's an interesting tidbit that I hope the world's paying attention to. Oh yeah, we're not getting the herd uh, immunity like we need to do with every other virus that's out there at this point. Too many people are relying on our leaders, the government to protect us. They're not protecting us. They're, we have our own, we all have our own minds. We can think for ourselves. If you don't want to go outside and you're scared of the virus, don't go outside. Personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. Uh, taking folks like your mom, locking them up in nursing homes for their own good. Well, own good, 
your mom still passed away from COVID-19. How yeah. do they protect her? Well, and Who they and they robbed her of the last eight months exactly. of inter human inter interaction. We have. Um, uh, I think I hugged her once or twice yeah. during the eight months that she was in. And a, she was uh, depressed due to it. Yeah. And probably a weakened immune system so that when she yes. did get the virus, which by the way, I don't blame anybody for that. I um, am a huge believer in mind over matter. After a while, you a, just give up. A positive attitude. A uh, little sunlight. We know uh, clinically that vitamin D and sunlight actually protects against all sorts of viruses, including uh, the SARS-CoV-2 Wuhan China virus. Right. Um, okay. And so you, you touched on herd immunity. Do you think that herd immunity would have been inevitable as the virus spreads through the population? Or do you think that the vaccines, and there are, there are at least two now, there, there are two uh, being used in the United States. I think there are a couple of others that are um, being used elsewhere and, and probably on the horizon in the U.S. So I think Will the vaccine contribute to herd immunity? Honestly, I think, uh, I don't even trust the vaccine. I think what they're doing uh, by the numbers going right down right now, they're going, oh, it's the vaccine, the vaccine's doing it. How do we know for sure it's the vaccine doing it? It could be herd immunity. I don't trust the scientists or what they're all telling us. Well, uh, the numbers began to go down in New York after a large percentage of the population was infected and recovered mm -hmm. uh, prior to the vaccine being handed exactly. out. So we know that herd immunity can occur because of population exposure. Right. Um, but don't you think that the vaccine can help that along? I think it can help, but I also think there's a lot of money being made in these vaccines. Um, I don't trust, I, I, I don't trust the government. Uh, this whole virus coming out. Now you're a, you're a known Trump supporter. I am. And you know Trump. that Operation Warp Speed was a Trump policy. I, well, you could, Hey, politics are games. He brought man. he brought a he brought a he brought a vaccine to the world. He did in record time, and it he appears did. to be a vaccine that, that a is lot effective. But there are involved in that vaccine, like Fauci, Gates, and Gates. Who is he to talk about viruses or what we need to do? He's not a flipping doctor, and he's got money invested in this vaccine. The guy's yeah. going to get rich off of this stuff. Ha have you seen where Gates now has said that uh, that? Um, uh, rich countries, whatever that means, should go to synthetic meat at this point? Well, let him go to synthetic meat. <laughs> the rest of us want to eat what we want and leave us the heck alone. Yeah, so you don't like the, uh, the uh, factory made beef? Absolutely not. And why would you <laughs> trust it? And how could that be any better for you? They tell you, eat lean meats, eat lean proteins. Oh, okay, but now I'm going to go ahead and start eating this synthetic stuff. Seriously? Yeah. I don't know a lot about it. Um, I know that I have tried some, some synthetic meat, and it's okay. But, uh, yeah, we're not going to put all of our cattle ranchers out of business. Yeah, no, thank That you. sounds like a bad idea to me. Oh, I hope people are waking up and seeing what the heck is going on in this country right now because yeah. they are trying to change it. Well, uh, not trying. In a year, this country has yeah. changed dramatically. The yeah. world has changed because dramatically. Because there are so many people that listen and and they they rely on others to take care of them. They don't believe in themselves. They don't want to get up and do what it takes to survive. They want it. So they're getting spoiled. They're getting lazy. They want to be taken care of. If you were to put on your tinfoil hat, because you know you and I are sort of right wing nuts, which conspiracy theories um, do you think are, are real? It, and I mean with regard to the technocrat cabal, the, uh, the globalization movement, China's role in, in taking over the world, how much of this is real? Okay, All China of it? is. Some of it? Biden, he is in bed with China, so that's scary right there. China is, it's, uh, it, I'm scared for my kids and their kids and their future. You think China's the biggest threat to oh, the world? Oh gosh, China's a huge threat. Not only just China, but our own government is a threat to mm. us. Yeah, I actually think that the uh, modern American liberal progressive movement is the biggest threat to democracy on, in the world. Well, and, they're the ones and China's a very, China China's a very close second. Well, they're working hand in hand, if you yeah. ask me. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, what would you, uh, what, what would be the one thing you'd want everybody to know about um, our path forward, how, how we become a free people again and how we move on with our lives in light of the fact that we do now have a new uh, virus to contend with every year. Oh, quit being afraid. Get out there. Do it. Go to work. 
quit relying on the government. Quit being lazy. Quit being fooled by their promises. Oh, we'll give you this. Oh, we'll give you that. But quit thinking, oh, I'm going to get a free uh, college education. I'm going to get uh, free food. I'm going to get free phones. I'm going to get this. Quit being lazy. And self-centered. Speak up. Realize that we have a, a world to hand over to our kids this and grandkids. This country wasn't founded on a bunch of lazy asses. Get up. Get off your butt. Okay. My beautiful wife, Cheryl Fredrissey. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.